So what's the difference between multiplexing and multiple access in communication systems? And it really comes down to multiplexing is a term that's used when you've got a point-to-point -point link. So um, you're going to have control over putting multiple data streams together in a device called a multiplexer, often MUX is used, and it's over a single link. And then you have a DMUX at the other end. Uh, to go back to the individual data streams. And so uh, you've got a high rate link in the middle and you've got lower rate links coming in. Um, so this is often the case in, uh, in a network where you have low rate links from the access part of the network and in the multiplexer you access a high rate link as a backhaul into the core of the network, for example. And then you uh, recover the original streams uh, at the output. Uh, this could be an optical fiber. These could be optical fibers. So we could do it in two different ways. Uh, one is a uh, timed way where we send the data at higher rates on this high rate link. This is a, a time uh, sending the bits at faster rates over a bigger bandwidth. Or we could divide, that's in time, or we could divide up the frequency and give uh, each their own frequency. These come in on different frequencies in optical fibers, uh, different colors of light, and we put them all multiplexed over the, uh, the, op the high rate optical fiber. Uh, so this is multiplexing, and multiple access is the case where you've, you don't have a single device that's putting all of those signals together. So let's say three mo mobile phones, here's a mobile phone tower, and they are all accessing the air uh, channel between the mobile devices and the tower and so what happens here the same thing these are uh, we can um, we have to these are low rate signals in comparison to the bandwidth of the channel if we try if we're going to get them all through uh, and uh, the difference being here that we don't coordinate we can't it's not so easy to coordinate all these users on the multiple access channel we can still do put things like the first one, we send at a higher symbol rate, so these send faster, their, their digital bits send faster, and then leave a gap of time, and this is called time division multiple access, so you have a fast rate time symbol in the channel compared to the rates of each individual user, or we can have frequency division multiple access, just like we had over here with the optical, uh, where each user gets their own frequency band. This is in the frequency, this is in the time. Uh, we can also have code division multiple access, where each user sends all of the time all of, across all of the frequencies, but differentiates, differentiates themselves by a code. And of course, uh, these ones are all going to require some level of coordination in the network. Or we could have an uncoordinated one, like carrier sense multiple access. So these ones are used in cellular, um, and this one here, the carrier sense multiple access, where you sense whether a carrier is active and then you send a packet, but you could have collisions, and this is used in Wi-Fi. Uh, and so if you have a coordinated, you can try to minimize interference, and also you try to minimize here, but it's in a less coordinated or totally uncoordinated way, as long as you adhere to the standard of how you access the channel. The main difference being that you don't have coordination and you have interference in the multiple access case. So don't forget to uh, like this video, it helps others to find it, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos.